let us break free. On our knees. Let us break bread. sisters in Jesus Christ. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord today as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. The Bible has a lot to say about the Lord's Supper, but I just want to share this with you. The church in Corinth was a troubled church. There was a whole lot going on in that particular church, a lot of trouble. In fact, they used to get together and have what they call the feast love. Feast love was a dinner, much like the potluck dinner. But when the people got together, many of them were selfish, and they did not want to share with those who weren't like them. There were people who were selfish that did not want to share their potluck dinner, and after the potluck, they would have communion. And folk were doing some selfish things that the Apostle Paul had to get them, get with them to tell them, this is not like Christ. And my brothers and sisters, when you come together, you need to make sure that your hearts are pure when you take the Lord's Supper. But the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians, uh, chapter, in 2 Corinthians, verses 23 through 26 of that particular chapter, chapter 11. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, this is the Apostle Paul talking that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till it comes. So, my brothers and sisters, this, this bread that we are going to partake of today represents and it's indicative of the body of Christ who, bled, who, who, who suffered much with his body that particular night. And this cup represents the blood that was shed for your sins and for mine. So let us bless these elements as we partake of the Lord's Supper. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for these elements that represent your body and your blood. We don't take for granted that you did not have to do it, but you did. And you did it for a wretch like us. And we give you thanks, Lord, for being that God that cares so much for sinners like us, that you came and shed your blood and was beaten all night long for humankind. Lord, we ask that you bless these elements and that we also examine our own hearts to ensure that we are partaking of this uh, communion in the appropriate way. That our hearts appear, and if we need to forgive someone, if we also need to be forgiven, Lord, we pray that we ask for forgiveness and that we also forgive those who have offended us. This is our prayer. We ask it, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we indeed do pray. And let everyone say, Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise God. Let us break bread together on our knees. Come on. Sing with me, my brothers and sisters. Let us break bread together on our knees. Help us sing that song. Let us break bread. Let us break bread.
when I fall on my knees. I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun. Let us drink wine together. Let us drink wine together. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall, when I fall on, my knees, on my knees, with my face, with my face to the rising sun, rising sun. Oh, Lord, oh Lord, have mercy. Praise God together. Let us praise God together. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord. On me. Come to the front. Together. On, on our knees. Let's break bread together. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall. When I fall on my knees. With my face. Let us drink wine. Let us drink wine together. On our knees. The body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't open it. When I fall, when I fall on my knees with my face to the right. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may we commune together. This cup represents the blood that was shed for the sins of the world, for yours and mine in the entire world. May we commune together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us after they finished supper, they sang a hymn as they went out to the Mount of Olives. May we do likewise.
praises shall continually be in my mouth. Good morning, First Baptist. Good morning. What a day to come out and celebrate and praise God. What a wonderful day that God has created. Amen. First of all, giving honor to God and Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the head of my life, and I thank God every day for what he has done for me. And I praise God that you are thanking God for being in the midst of the living. Amen. We want to first celebrate our birthdays and anniversaries for the month of August. And if you have a birthday or anniversary for the month of August, just raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you and you and you, and that God will continue to bless you with many more anniversaries and many more birthdays. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our scripture is coming from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 17. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praise God for the reading of God. Amen. Let us not only be hearers, but doers as well. Amen. 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 Good morning, First Baptist, and good morning to our visiting friends. It's good to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. We are now going to prepare ourselves for the word of God. We want you to sit back and just enjoy the music, uh, musical selection before the sermon. God bless. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, do you know the song say, how great, how great.
instruments uh, to praise the Lord and we do the same. We thank God for the music. Thank you Elder Davis and thank you to our drama and all of you uh, that participated in this musical uh, selection prior to uh, the sermon. Uh, good morning once again. I'm glad to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. Today is not the final sermon. I have one more after this uh, talking about the armor of God but we're happy to be here today to talk about this particular one coming out of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, we read in your hearing verses 14 through 17, but I'm going to read into your hearing verse 17 out of the NIV version of the Bible, the NIV version. Uh, uh, chapter, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 reads as follows. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. Let us take a moment and go to the throne as we prepare our hearts for what the Lord has to say. It is with hearts of gratitude, Lord, that we come to give you thanks, to lift you up in praise. We ask, Lord, that you would speak by way of your spirit. Have your way right now as only you can. We ask, Lord, that uh, perhaps there's someone who doesn't know you doesn't know you in the free pardon of his or her sins, that they may come, fall on their knees and say, what must I do to be saved? God, we ask that someone who may know you already, but just struggling with the challenges of life, fall on their knees and say, Lord, I need to follow you and I need to wear your armor. I need to do and be obedient to your word. This is our prayer. We ask it all. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we indeed do pray. And let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Good morning once again. I want to just uh, say that the title of our sermon this morning is very simple, The Sword. The Sword. We're still in the series um, putting on the full armor of God. We have looked at all of the pieces except the sword of the Spirit. We have, uh, uh, we've talked about the belt of truth. We have put on the breastplate of righteousness. We have put on the shoes of peace. And we have taken the shield of faith. And we have the helmet of salvation. I had this notion to go to store and buy all of these pieces and demonstrate it for you this morning, but I said, no. I'm not going to go that far, but I just want you to imagine 
uh, the Romans uh, the soldiers what they had to do. Now we've dealt with all of those. We have been uh, told that we have, uh, when we have done all that we know to do, we ought to stand firm. And this is stand firm because the enemy, the devil, is on the prowl. And he wants to defeat every one of us who name the name of Christ. And we, uh, we've seen in God's word that you cannot put on the armor of God and expect it to work if you have no relationship with him. So in other words, you have to know Jesus for yourself. Because you can't put this arm on by yourself. And you know that with, uh, and, and you can't even fight this war by yourself. You, you need the Lord. I don't know, today, we, we, this is the sixth installment. In other words, the sixth uh, uh, for the Christian warfare. And I trust that we have firmly ingrained uh, within our hearts and our minds that we have to, we are engaged in a spiritual warfare. And it is every single solitary day. When you wake up in the morning, even before you wake up, the devil is on the prowl. He's trying to uh, strategize and do everything he can to defeat you as a child of God. And when you, sometimes when you wake up and somebody say, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. It just seems like all oh, hell breaks loose sometimes when you wake up in the morning. Then you get out on the road and somebody about to run you off the road. And everything seems to go wrong before you even get to work. The devil, he wants to make sure that he makes your life as miserable as possible. So this morning, we're gonna, we've talked about all of the pieces and all of those pieces were defensive pieces. In other words, when we put on the breastplate of righteousness and, the, and we have everything that we have when it comes to our belt and everything else that we put on the helmet of salvation, all of those were defensive because the enemy will come and attack you and those things are, uh, help with protecting you, your vital organs, your vital spiritual organs uh, so that the devil will not be able to defeat you. But the, uh, the, the, the sword is the only offensive weapon in this account. I want you to recognize the fact that you can use the sword for both defense and for offense. Yes. So the sword, every Roman soldier had a sword. Yes. Uh, uh, it was called the gladius. It was a double-edged sword. And it had a double-edged blade of a length of anywhere between 12 and 20 inches. And that was, and that was, that is, that is that the sword was not that long, but it was designed for close combat, if you will. So this gladius was not the only uh, Roman soldier's weapon, but it was the weapon of choice that they had during this time. But he, he compared this to the word of God. It says that the spirit of God has given the Christian a marvelous weapon and uh, in the word of God. Now, however, I need to clarify what is meant by the word of God. Uh, this is extremely important. Listen to what I've got to say here. The Apostle Paul is not referring to the entire Bible in this situation as such. For the Greek word we have translated word is not the logos, but rema. Now, rema refers to just a specific portion of scripture pertaining to a specific subject or applicable to a specific situation. In other words, God will give you out of the word of God what you need for a particular situation, give you a scripture that will help you through that situation. Am I right about it? If you don't believe me, then you can look at the word of God. You will see when Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 11 uh, it talks specifically about this. Uh, and that's the best example that I could give you right now. The Bible tells us that then uh, uh, Jesus, then, then, see Jesus had been uh, fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. How many of you know that when you are at your weakest point when it comes to your physicality or the, the devil will come at you when you're hungry or when you're thirsty or when you uh, crave something. And Jesus at this point had been fasting. So Matthew 4, 1 through 11, listen to what it says. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
I'm so glad when the, uh, the, the disciples asked the Lord to teach us how to pray. He said, lead us not into temptation. But he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he uh, then became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones uh, to become bread. But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You see, the devil wasn't finished with him, and he's not finished with you. Just because you passed the first test, that doesn't mean that he's done with you. Then the Bible says, then, then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand at the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on, his hand, on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Uh-huh. And see, uh, uh, and again, the devil took him. The devil still wasn't finished with him. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. Listen, I want you to note something in the scripture, that every time Satan tempted Jesus to satisfy his fleshly desires, food, right? Uh, not only that, his fleshly pride when he took him on the mountain. You guess what? Some folk will fall prey to that. And then his fleshly ego, he took him to the high mountain and said, I'll give you all of this. Jesus countered with uh, the enticement with a it is written. You see, Jesus brought uh, to the battle a specific passage of scripture that dealt with the specific nature of the temptation. You see, I don't know what your temptation is. You don't know what mine is. But there's a word for every temptation that comes your way. God will give you what you need when you need it. See, when the chosen scripture uh, occupying, uh, when, 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 when the devil was trying to just infiltrate his mind, Jesus was able to quote the word of God because Satan, and, uh, and, and, and he, 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 he's out to get even the Lord of glory in this situation. Now, when temptation comes our way, whether it be a temptation to lose your temper, whether it be a temptation to be greedy, uh, you may be tempted to become discouraged. Or what about the temptation to indulge in sexual immorality? Or the temptation to be selfish, my brothers and sisters. A temptation to wallow in self-pity. Uh, the temptation to choose entertainment over worship. A uh, temptation to go over the speed limit. Lord, have mercy. Can somebody help me? Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy to go over the speed limit. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, what about the temptation to just complain? The temptation uh, to worry. To worry about matters we shouldn't even be worried about. A uh, temptation to get high or a temptation to get drunk or uh, a temptation to be envious or the temptation to be jealous or the temptation uh, to speak a lie uh, or whatever the temptations might be. I tell you, God has a word for you in the word of God. And you can quote the scripture and say, it is written. Ah, uh, I tell you, Satan, Satan is out to get us, my folks. But uh, Satan and, uh, and the temptation no longer will have a foothold in your life. 
when you are able to quote the scripture. That's why it's important. And I'm going to tell you in a minute how you can do that. Because you can't just quote the scripture if you don't study it. You can't quote the scripture if you don't engage in it. You can't quote the scripture if you're not one who gets down in the nitty gritty of learning the word of God. Now I would have you to note another point from this passage in Matthew. I want you to take notice that Satan himself quoted scripture in one of the attacks on Jesus. He said, it is written. But Jesus came back and said, oh, that's no justification. See, devil, the devil knows the Bible too. Uh, he knows it better than you. He's been around a long time. I'm sure he studied God's word. He was in the presence of God. His name was Lucifer. Praise God. And he was beautiful. And he was over, if you will, the heavenly choir. So he knows God. He knows God's word. And so that's why we have to know how to decipher what's wrong and what's right in situations like that. The devil knows the word as well. But when he quote, and he'll take it out of context so that you can do what he would have you to do. But I stopped by here to tell you, even when Satan quoted that scripture, Jesus said, in a, said but it is written. Praise God. Uh, see, see, he countered acted. So sometimes you have to go on the defense with your sword and sometimes on the offense. Brother in the devil knows the scripture. He knows it just like you know. He loves to twist the scriptures and to fit his own needs so that he can get you to do what he wants you to do. And let me remind it, let us remind ourselves according to 2 Corinthians 11. Verses 13 to 14 warns us that Satan's workers disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. There are manifold pastors and reverends and preachers and evangelists and priests uh, out there that who seem to be servants of Jesus Christ they are preaching and teaching the word of God but sadly they are actually servants of Satan who preach and teach lies and heresies because they twist and they distort the scripture I know that's an indictment against preacher, but I got something. I got to tell you something, my brothers and sisters. There are people out here who want to see you go to hell as they are on their way. Yes, the only way you're going to be able to defend yourself against all of the lies that these false preachers and teachers will do is to know the word of God for yourself. And if they say it's written, you can come back and say it is written. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm not supposed. You know what I mean. There are some preachers who want you to worship them, not God. Oh, I want you to fan them. Come over here and fan me. Come over here and give me water. Praise be to God. We're all sinners saved by the grace of Almighty God. Preacher, no preacher. We need to understand that we, our allegiance is to Jesus Christ, is to God Almighty, and not some man or woman or reptile or the sun or the moon and the stars. We worship Almighty God and him only. You see, the word of God also is a sword. The word of God is also a sword, and it's an offensive, uh, offensive weapon. You see, this weapon, uh, this is the weapon that you can use to inflict real damage on the works and the uh, kingdom of Satan himself. Yeah, there are three ways in which you can use this, the, the word of God to, uh, to assault Satan's kingdom. Listen to what I've got to say here. You can expose his deeds of darkness. Listen to what Ephesians 11, uh, 6, uh, 5 and 11 says. We are told not to partake in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. There are people all around us who want to condone or, uh, or who want to do or rather and condone evil things because they do not know that they're evil. They do not know that God speaks against this in the word, in the scriptures. Well, uh, we're commanded to bring some understanding to these individuals who are just so deceived and just don't know any better. But see, David said in the word in Psalm 119, 105, also in 130, verse 130, he said, uh, see, the word of God is a light to us. 
I don't know about you, but it brings a light to you. It, in other words, it'll open your eyes. It, you were in darkness, but now you're in the light. And when you read the word, it sheds light on your life, sheds light in your path. The Bible says in 119.105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and, and a light to my pathway. The word of God will lead you and guide you, but it'll be light all the way. You see, the unfolding of your words gives light, praise God. It gives understanding to the simple, those of us that are simple-minded, but he'll give you understanding. Oh, and it, it, will, it will help you to understand the difference between darkness and light. If anybody, if someone around us talks about something wrong, as if it is okay, we must inform them otherwise. You got to tell the truth. You got to live the truth. Don't sit there and entertain that mess. Because if it's against the word of God, you need to speak up, my brothers and sisters. And don't allow people to do that. The second thing that I like to say, the word of God, what, what can it do? This sword, this sword, it can refute worldly philosophies and false religions. Worldly philosophies. See, the world is with philosophical in so many ways. They come up with all kinds of, see, many people participate in wrong because they believe in wrong ideas and they believe in wrong teaching and they don't mind you knowing it I'm reminded I didn't have this in my notes but I'm reminded of Ron Reagan the son of Ronald Reagan an atheist and he said I don't mind I want you to know me atheist. he stand he had a commercial and he said something to the effect at the end uh, that he was going to hell and he and he didn't mind burning in hell forever for being what he was but I want you to know today that, 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 that that's a, that's what some people believe what they believe, the philosophies of the world. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, Paul challenged uh, the, such beliefs. If you look at Acts 17, we have an account of his going to Athens in Greece. Y'all remember when he saw all of these shrines in Athens? Yes, and then he goes and he, and he teaches the Jews about the Messiah or the Christ and so forth. And in verse 18, he goes to the philosophers, the Epicureans, and the Stoics, and he tells them about themselves. Praise be to God. And, and in verses 22 through 31, he talks to the heathen idol worshipers and the philosophers about the true nature of the true God, about the true Jesus Christ, about salvation. He tell it like it is. And when we are out here, we need to tell somebody. The truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and not let people just philosophize us, uh, uh, us in whatever way that we, they want to. We need to be able to refute the demonic uh, inspired beliefs of, uh, that prevail even in our culture today. Uh, listen folks, we live in terrible times. We need to contest the worldly philosophies that shape our society. I don't know, evolution and all kinds of false religions and so forth. Uh, this can be done by the sword of the spirit, the word of the living God. And beyond the worldly philosophies and the false religions, we need to correct those within Christianity. Uh, who have been entrapped by false doctrine. Do you know that folk can be sitting in church and still be entrapped by false doctrine? As we read, read in the epistles of the apostles, the, uh, they are frequently refuting false teachings. If you look at the Apostle Paul's letter, he talked about false teaching a lot. Evil men and apostles will proceed from bad to worse, he says, deceiving and being deceived. Today, we see the fulfillment of Paul's words in our day and time. There are so many churches that claim to be the Lord's church, but they are not. There are, there are so many who believe themselves to be Christians, but they are not. And I'm not sitting here judging, but I'm talking about based on the word of God. Yes, sir, they have been confused and they've been, uh, uh, they've been blinded by false teachings. I, I remember when I belonged to a church in Winston-Salem, uh, there were people that came into the church to perpetrate righteousness, but they had false teaching. Uh, you could tell, and if you, uh, if, you, if you know the word of God and you hear them talk, you'll say, something is not right about this person. Oh, they're bringing in stuff. Paul had to deal with that, and he reminded Timothy. Paul had to deal with that, and he reminded the churches of his day that you got to be careful and make sure that you stay true to the word of the living God thirdly you got to preach the gospel uh, of salvation preach the gospel of salvation the great way the great the greatest way that we can damage the kingdom of Satan is to turn people away from Satan and turn them to Christ 
Jesus our Lord through the gospel, through the gospel, the word of the living God. We will consider this in some depth. Let me say this, my brothers and sisters, let us return to the, the heart of the matter here. The only way that we can defend ourselves from temptation and heresies and anything else is to make sure that we know the word for ourselves. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to know uh, what John 3.16 is. Most of you should know what John 3 says, for God so loved the world. But you ought to know something. Praise be to God. You ought to be able to get on your, uh, the day you have no excuse. You can put in your phone, John 3.16, praise be to God. And it'll take you and, say, and then start quoting it to you, for God so loved the world. There are no excuses whatsoever. You see, my brothers and sisters, uh, a couple of generations ago, the members uh, of, of the Lord's church possessed such a greater knowledge uh, uh, of the scriptures than members do today. I don't know. It just seems like people have gotten away from the tradition of understanding God's word, the tradition of doing the right thing, the tradition of understanding how important it is that you walk by faith and not by sight. Paul had to refute the Hebrew Christians in a similar menta with a similar mentality, my brothers and sisters. And I tell you, uh, it, 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 it bothers me immensely that we have such babes in Christ. Been in church 30 years, don't know anything. Always complaining and whining and wondering and, 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 and leaving the church and church hopping and doing everything and hating on other Christians. What's wrong with you? Grow up and eat the meat of the word of God. Yes, sir. I remember years ago uh, there was a man and a woman and they were in their 70s or 80s. I forgot whether it was in their 70s or 80s. But their son was about 40, 40 or 45 years old. And, uh, and they said, we're tired. And, and as you read the article, you can understand what they meant when they said, we're tired. Uh, so forth. he weighed about 300 pounds. But he was in diapers. His mind never grew up. And they had to take care of him all of his life. Now, can you imagine a 300-pound man being taken care of his parents all of his life? They have to change his diapers, feed him, and as if he... See, guess what? When you are a child of God, you should not stay in diapers. At some point, you ought to grow up and learn the word of God so that you can defend for yourself. Put on your armor, take your sword, and you defeat the devil when he comes your way. Oh, Yes. Yes, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, the scripture tells us. Oh, is it, uh, see, see, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, how can we? How can we do this? First of all, uh, I got a few more things and I want, I'm going to take my seat. All right, read and study the Bible for yourself. You see, uh, in, in Colossians 3.16, said, let the word of Christ dwell in you, in you, richly. Brethren, you can, you can learn, you, you, you can listen to sermons. You can uh, have your religious pamphlets. You can have your religious tracts. You can have books. You can have whatever, devotionals every day and all day long. These may indeed bless your heart. But the guess, but let me say this, that uh, that will not bless your heart as half as much as picking up your Bible and uh, reading it and studying it for yourself. Why? These are a few reasons that I want to share with you. Only by reading the scriptures, only by reading the Bible itself, uh, of ourselves, do we learn what fully is in the word. Not some pamphlet. Oh, I love reading. And I implore you to read. But nothing takes the place of God's word. Sermons and pamphlets and all these other things, they don't take the place. Yeah, you may listen to me and say, oh, I got a good word today. Praise be to God. That's all well and good. But guess what? You need to read it for yourself and study it for yourself. Only by reading and studying the scripture yourself or do we get the big picture, if you will. And many are led astray because they fail to grasp the overall plan of God. And you understand the plan of God when you read it for yourself. And only by reading and only by reading and only by studying of the Bible ourselves do we learn how to use the Bible or God's sword. God Almighty, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, you know what? The, the word of God 
is quick and powerful, <laughs> sharper than a double-edged sword. When that devil comes, whoop, whoop. I mean, you can cut him one way and cut it the other way. Guess what? He got to get out of your company because you know the word. You studied the word. You understand the word. You understand what God has for you. And lastly, about this point that I want to make is that when you personally read and study the scriptures, you are given the spirit of God the opportunity to speak directly to you. He may speak to you and give you insights on matters that you never realized you desperately needed. And you know what? It's so some, the word of God is something else because you can read that one scripture today and read that same scripture tomorrow. And guess what? And he give you new insights <laughs> into the word of God. But it's the Holy Spirit that does all of this. Not only that, my brothers and sisters, you've got to pray for divine enlightenment and understanding. Divine enlightenment and understanding. So be, before you begin reading and, and, and studying God's word, uh, ask the author, uh, the author with an, a capital A, uh, to help you understand what you're about to read and, and what, what you're about to study. Guess what? I've been reading through the Bible for about 40 years. I forgot the number. I forgot what year I started. I wish I remember what year I started. But I've been reading a long time. And I read every single solitary day. Uh, every now and then I skip a day. I just be so tired. I, I, I make it up though the next day. But the fact is, before I study, before I read the Bible, I say a prayer. God opened up my understanding because I want to understand your word. I don't want to just be reading it for uh, mental exercise. I want to know what the word has to say to me today. Yes, sir, even though I'm reading through the Bible, I want to understand it. Give me new insight. Give me understanding. Oh, oh let me understand your precepts and the examples of the word of God. I pray, and not only do I pray on the front end, when I finish, it takes me about 15, 20 minutes to read my scriptures for the day. Praise be to God, and then I, I pray on the back end. Now, Lord, let what has come in, into my mind, into my heart. Yes, sir, may I receive it now. May it be full to my spiritual soul. Yes, sir. So I pray on the front end, and I pray on the back end. You've got to ask for divine enlightenment and understanding of the word of God. Thirdly. Memorize the scripture. Memorize scripture. Yes, sir. When you read the scripture, uh, do so with the purpose of retaining what you've read. James 1.25 said, tells us this, that, uh, that the forgetful hearer or reader will not be blessed. Did y'all hear what I said? The forgetful hearer or reader will not be blessed. This is true for a few reasons, my brothers and sisters. Why do you, uh, why, uh, what I mean, excuse me, what you do not retain, you cannot apply to your life. If you don't retain it, you, it, won't, it won't be applicable to your life. And when you remember scripture, you will have a better chance of recalling them uh, to mind during an occasion that you really need it. Ha! Lord have mercy. Isn't it wonderful to know that, uh, that you can say, uh, re you, you can resist the devil? <laughs> And he will, the Bible didn't say he might, he will, not uh, supposed to, he will flee from you. You can resist him in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir, you need to remember what you read one day to, uh, will, will provide a, a stepping stone to understand another passage tomorrow. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, you got to memorize it. I recommend you read the Bible, read and study your Bible. You pick out verses. If you have to write cards, put something on your refrigerator in your bedroom or whatever you need to, however you learn best. Praise be to God. You just study the word and memorize scripture. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of the Old Testament, Joshua. He said, meditate on it day and night. Praise God. Oh, yes. And then fourth, that's my word here, meditate on the word. Yes, sir. You're connected to memorizing the word. You got to meditate on it. Yes, sir. You got to take time and just let it simmer in your spirit. You got to take time to get deeply involved in it and just meditate on it. Just take time between you and God and talk to the Lord and just meditate on the word of God. Oh, yes, yes. And finally, share the word with others. Share the word with others. There are so many people that are lost today that need to hear a word from the Lord, that are depressed and oppressed and down and out and need a helping hand. And they need to hear a word from the Lord. And they're waiting on somebody to come and tell them something about something that, that will help them along the way. Yes, sir, we must not keep the word in our sheath. 
Guess what? I, now, now the sheep is that, that, that belt <laughs> where the sword is. You keep it in your sheep. Then the devil is going to come. You won't have your defense and your offensive weapon to go on offense when you need to. You got to take it out. And sometimes you got to go out. And you got to swing that sword. Praise be to God. And tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Because it was nothing but the word of God that I'm saved today. For I thank God for his word. For, for I was listening to Sunday school this morning. And I believe it was Romans 10. 9 and 10. Uh, praise be to God. It blessed my heart so, so very much. Uh, see, if you want to get saved today, then that's one of the best scriptures that you could read uh, for with the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes, sir, you as a child of God, you need to learn that word. So if somebody needs Jesus, somebody needs to be saved, you can quote the scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved I, I'm so glad about it because Jesus did come one day and he died on heaven the Calvary's cross and he died for the sins of all of, of humankind and thank God you are here today because of what he did he saved he saved some of you and some of you need to make a decision for the Lord to say yes Lord I've, I've, I've walked wrong I've done wrong but I've come today to say Lord I need you like never before it's nothing but the word of God it's the word of God that keeps us <laughs> yes sir we have our sword so wear your spiritual armor. Wear the entire, all the defensive part, but wear your sword. And every now and then, you got to use your sword. Uh-huh, because the devil is after you. But when he comes, you can do what Jesus did. It is written. And he may throw a scripture at you, but it's also written. Praise be to God. Don't you let the devil defeat you because he is a defeated foe. He knows what his end is. But he want to carry as many people as he possibly can to his place of torment one day don't let that happen to you take your sword let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise we open the doors of the church if everyone stand if there's one today who doesn't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior maybe you're listening to me online you don't know Christ that means you have not said yes to his will, yes to his way. You have not asked him to come into your heart and into your life. He wants to change you because we live in a culture today that's very dangerous and we need to be saved. If someone were to do something, we need to know that we know without a shadow of doubt that we're saved. If that's you today, you don't know Christ, then we invite you to come to the altar and to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You're not joining church, you're joining Jesus. Amen? Under this part of the invitation. Perhaps there's someone else who is saved, but you don't belong to a church in this community. You've moved here, or you're just wanting to, to a different experience, but you want to be part of a Bible-believing church. Then we invite you to come right now to, receive, to join up with First Baptist Church. Perhaps there's someone else. You say... Hey, Pastor, I just need prayer. And if that's you today, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand right where you are. Praise God. God sees your hands. God sees your heart. And he knows what your desires are, what you need. We're going to pray about that momentarily. If there's one today, we're going to let uh, the musician play a couple of verses of a song and give you the opportunity to come, and then I'll pray about those concerns.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to prepare ourselves. Don't let the Lord, I mean, if you feel like worshiping, you go ahead and worship in your own way as we continue. But we're preparing ourselves for our offering. We want you to be as liberal as you possibly can. The ushers are going to come now to minister unto us. For those of you that will be giving by way of online, we ask that you send it to First Baptist Fuquay, and that's spelled F U Q U A Y, P O Box 432, Fuquay, Verena, to North Carolina, 27526. If you need to call the church and uh, for a prayer request, you want to leave a prayer request, then our phone number is 919-552-9150. Again, that's 919-552-9150 for any prayer requests or any concerns you have. And if you need to know the Lord, then certainly we have someone that will speak to you about that as well. I'll continue to sing at this time. Praise God. And it's your holy place. And we will rise to Zion's eyes. Oh, to pray. Unify. Oh, how we love. for prayer eternal and all wise creator yes. here we are with thanksgiving on our lips thank you dear God for your love your mercy and your grace that you have given us and Father God we stand here with the offering and we thank you for all of your many gifts to us and we give back to you what you've given to us, a portion of. And Father God, we ask that you would bless it in the way that you see fit. And that you would grant knowledge to those who are in charge that they would do as you lead them to do. And Father God, bless each and every person that gave, those that desire to give but had not to give as well. And Father God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. For this offering, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. O Lord, and of thine own. standing we thank God for each and every one of you take your sword the sword it's important that you take this offensive weapon that's the only one you have praise God the others are defensive weapons we thank God for the word today just to ensure that you have the word engrafted in your heart praise be to God father we thank you for the word today we thank you for the music we thank you for the offering we thank you for all of the gifts thank you for sunday school thank you for intercessory prayer thank you for all that has taken place this day thank you for those that are here to hear what the word has to say to us we ask that you would be with each of us until we meet again this is our prayer we ask it all in the name of christ our lord
Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. God bless you.